Eric Burgess here. If events E and F are independent and probability of E is 0.12 and probability of F is 0.32, find the probability of F or E. Now there are two really important pieces of information we're given. The first piece of information we're given is that the events are independent. So immediately we can say that that means that this definition has to hold true. The event, if one of the events occurs, that means that it has to be the same thing even if another event occurred before it. So given that F occurred, the probability of E is still the same thing. It doesn't change. So this relationship has to hold true. And the same thing can be said for the event F. The probability of F is not changed if E happens first. It doesn't matter which one happens before it because they are independent. So that's our first really big piece of information. Our second big piece of information is that we're asked to find the probability of or. And since they don't tell us if the events are mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive, we have to take the not mutually exclusive case because it's the most broad case. It catches everything. It'll work for the most broad number of situations. So we say the probability of F or E is equal to probability of F plus probability of E. And then we subtract, right? Because this would be the end of the formula if the events were mutually exclusive. But if they overlap, we have to take off the overlapping bit. So the probability of F and E, the point where they are happening at the same time. That way we don't count them twice. So these two pieces of information are everything we need. So first off, we, we need to figure out how to get rid of this and, because we have the probability of F and we have the probability of E, but this probability of F and E is gonna throw us off. So we need the, the, uh, the formula for this. So the formula for and probability is the probability of F and E is equal to the probability of F and then times the probability of E given F. Now you might look at this and go, wait a second, this simplifies down because check this out. We found out up here based on independence that the probability of E given F, well here it is, E given F, that's equal to the probability of E. And so we can replace this with the probability of E. We could say the probability of F and E is equal to the probability of F times the probability of E. And this is this holds true, true when events are independent. Events are independent. And we, we just we just showed it. We just proved it. Like this is this has to be the case if this relationship is true, and that's true because this is the definition of independence. So now we can replace P of F and E with uh, this thing right here instead. So now we can say the probability of F or E has to be equal to the probability of F plus the probability of E minus the probability of F and E. And the probability of F and E is equal to this business. So that's minus the probability of F times the probability of E. I'm going to put parentheses around these uh, so that we don't get confused with the order of operations. So there we go. This is the formula. And remember, this only works when we are told events are independent. And so we, we can just derive it. Just uh, I find that at least that's how I do it. I don't have this memorized. So what we're going to do is now all we need to do is plug in the, the values. So we have probability of E that's 0.12 and probability of F is 0.32. So the probability of F or E is equal to 0.32 plus 0.12 minus 0.32 times 0.12. Let's see what we get here. So we get 0.32, turn it on, 0.32 plus 0.12 minus parentheses 0.32 times 0.12. We don't really need the parentheses. Order of operations would take care of it, but it's a good habit. So we hit enter and we get 0.4061. So this 
is equal to 0.40 or 1.6, my apologies, probability of F or E. So that is how you do this problem. Now, I know that a number of people will jump the gun on this and they'll misinterpret independent as mutually exclusive and use the uh, mutually exclusive form of F or E and that'll actually get you the wrong answer. So as you can see by the, the work we've done, we have to consider the definition of independence in order to get the correct formula that we're gonna use. So uh, that's it. Now you could you could just remember that this is the case when events are independent. And uh, for many of you, I know that's probably the optimal strategy. So you might just want to remember this formula and say, oh, if events are independent, this is the definition of, of an or probability. If you've got any questions, do feel free to drop those in the comments. If you're a Citrus College student, stop by online tutoring. We're there to help you. And we'll catch you in the next problem.